Are you still looking for Android Auto on your new Harley Davidson with that big infotainment screen? Well, I've done many, many videos on this topic. It all started with a Facebook posting, I believe it was from a gentleman named Richard, who pointed out a box that would convert the CarPlay to Android Auto. And that box came affectionately known as the Cameco box. And this box was available for a short period of time, but then it quickly sold out. Cameco also had another version of the box that worked. It was a little larger and had a few more ports, but it worked pretty well. And then that one sold out and the Comecos no longer were available. So since then, I continued to search for boxes and try them out. And I found a few additional that worked, but then we got a Skyline OS update. And when the Skyline OS update came out, many of these boxes quit working. They would not display correctly on the screen. The uh, AI box would load and it would launch Android Auto, but your speedo gauge would cover up the interface. So you couldn't use the full screen and you could only see part of your Android Auto on the screen. So I kept digging and what I found over time is that boxes that were built with Android OS version 10 seem to display correctly. Version 11 or newer, which is most common on the boxes, uh, do not display correctly on the uh, Harley Davidson after that Skyline OS update. So I continued to look. I did a recent video about how Android Auto is actually in the bike still and we just can't see it. And there's hope that someday Harley Davidson will be able to turn that on for us and we'll have built-in Android Auto. In that video, I featured a box that I had found by Onince and this box seemed to work. It had Android OS 10 on it. But once again, it quickly sold out on Amazon. So I reached out to this company as I usually do and I asked would it be possible to make some more of these boxes and I actually got a response and they said, yes, we noticed it sold out. We've already shipped some more to the warehouse and they'll be available again shortly. And sure enough, on Amazon, the box came available. They also noted in some of my old videos that they were watching that I referenced that original Cameco box, the A3403. And I noted in that video that it was one of my favorite boxes. And they said, hey, we've actually got that box that same box, would you like to try it out? So they agreed to send me one and here it is. It's the exact same box as that original Cameco box. And I couldn't believe that I had this box in my hand once again. This box was the original that I made the video with that was posted on Facebook and it worked really well. So it's available along with the other Cameco equivalent that I featured in my last video and both boxes are in stock. So what are the differences between the two boxes? Well, from a specification standpoint, they're a little bit different, but fairly close. They both have the exact same processor. It's a quad core Cortex A53. Not sure what that is, but they're the exact same processor. Uh, the smaller one has two gigs of RAM and the larger one has four gigs of RAM. So in theory, RAM is going to make the box perform better. The larger box is a lot more snappy than the smaller one, but if you're just using it for Android Auto, it's really not a big difference. If you're using the built-in interface, then you'll really see the difference. The other difference then is in storage. So the bigger one has 64 gigs of storage and the smaller one only has 16. So if your intent is to load some custom Google applications or some Google applications on the box and run them from the box without your phone, you definitely want to go with the larger one. A couple unique things about these two boxes that may impact your experience when using them with your Harley. First of all, both of these boxes can be paired as a headset. And as you know, Apple is requiring us to have a headset present in order to use Siri apparently, which I'm not interested in, but it's required. So I've done many videos on headset options for these bikes. And both of these boxes will present to the bike as a headset. So you don't need a headset adapter. You don't need a headset killer. If you're going to use your helmet headset though, you'll, you'll use that with your bike, pair that the bike, and then these will work with it. But both will pair as a headset without any additional adapters. However, there's a bug. 
So with the Skyline OS update, as I found with that original Cameco, you can pair as a headset, you can boot into Android Auto and you're good to go. But when you shut your bike off and turn it back on and you get to the Android Auto screen, it's just going to sit there and it won't pair with your bike. And you actually have to go in your Android phone and unpair the Android Auto and then repair it in order to get it to launch. It's pretty frustrating. So the box is connected as a headset, which will allow CarPlay to launch. So the box loads. So now we're getting the box's interface. And Android Auto should launch here, but it's not. So my phone is here with the BT connection, but it does not connect. So if I tap on it, it'll say connecting and then could not connect. Connecting and could not connect. But if I go to gear and I say allow audio, the box then sees it and the pairing begins and the Wi-Fi network starts and we end up in Android Auto. So which one do I recommend? I would consider the smaller CAO1. It's only $80. If your primary focus is Android Auto, this will boot up, connect to your phone and present Android Auto on the screen. It's a proven device and it works really well. So this would be my choice. The larger box, the Z6, is $140. It has more horsepower, but this is really gonna benefit you only if you use the interface that's built in. If you intend to use Android Auto, you're really not gonna see a difference. Now with either box, I think you're gonna have some challenges setting it up. They're a little tricky, but if you stick with it, you will get them to work. Once you have them successfully connected, I found both of them to be reliable. They will boot up and connect to your bike without any issue. But that initial setup is a bit challenging. Make sure you use the USB-C cable it came with. One, it's shorter, but B, it supports data, which we're gonna need for this connection. So with the bike booted up, it's important that you have a headset connected because this one will not work as a headset. So you can see that I'm showing my headset is connected and I'm using my Senna 20S for my helmet. You want to also make sure that your phone is not currently connected to the bike. So if you've paired your phone to the bike, it cannot show as the connected device. So if your phone is on the list, click on it and say disconnect, or frankly, you can just delete it all together. Now our Boom 20S is connected and the icon indicates that it is Rider. If your headset is not connected as Rider, this will not work. So you can click on it, you can change role, and you wanna make sure that Rider role is selected. So with all of that true, we'll connect our box to the USB-C port. The AA box starts and we get the Android logo, it takes a moment. Now, the first time you do this, you may run into some issues with it identifying the screen size correctly. So these icons may be squished and then the box will reboot on you. If you find that it continually reboots, you're gonna have to power the bike off and then turn it back on. And then it should boot and connect. If the screen is still not correct, it'll reboot again, turn the bike off, turn it back on, and you should get to this point after a couple reboots. If the box will not connect and you're just stuck at the connecting to CarPlay and the lights keep cycling on the box, turn your bike off and let it sit for at least a minute so the infotainment system goes completely off before you hold the trip switch down to power it back on. So be patient with it, and after some rebooting, you should get to this screen, and it'll boot to this screen consistently from that point forward. We're being asked to acknowledge the warning. You can accept that, or you can accept and have it never prompt again, which is what you're gonna wanna do. For my demo, I'll just accept. Now we're ready to pair our Android phone to the box. So what we're gonna do is tap on Android Auto, which will launch the Bluetooth pairing. And we're gonna to go to our Android phone. We're gonna scroll down from the top. And we're gonna to go to the gear icon for settings. You can get to this a few different ways. But then we're gonna to go to connected devices. So from there we'll scroll down and we'll locate Android Auto. So we'll tap on that. 
we will connect a car and then we're going to connect using wireless. So we'll tap on that and it says press the steering wheel handle, which we don't have. So we'll do connect using Bluetooth and then we'll choose pair a car. We'll see a list of devices and we're looking for the name of the box, which is on the screen. May take a moment for it to find it. And there it is, the BT dash, we'll tap on that. We'll pair it. It says allow, we'll allow that. You can see on the screen it's connecting. And then we have continue on your car. And so here's our Android Auto, we'll hit continue to acknowledge. And we're now on Android Auto on our new Harley Davidson. At this point, you should have no issues connecting the box. It should boot up, connect to your headset, and then boot up to that interface screen. You'll tap on Android Auto, and it should automatically connect to your phone and present to this screen. Now, what if you wanted to have it automatically boot into Android Auto, so you didn't have to stop at the box's interface each time? Well, you can do it, but it's a little tricky. So the next time you power cycle your bike, you're going to end up at this interface screen again. So we're going to tap Android Auto, and then we're going to quickly tap Setup. So we'll tap on Setup, and there's an option here, tap it once, and it'll turn Auto Connection on for CarPlay. From this point forward, it will launch the Android Auto application automatically. Even though it says Auto Connect CarPlay, it will auto connect Android Auto since we have an Android phone paired to the box. It's a nice feature, it's just a little tricky to tap on it. You may miss it the first time you try. A couple things about using this interface. You can use your hand control to move the icon up and around. But you can see here, I'm on the menu and I can't get over to the map. So I can go only up and down. That's my only option. If I click on the app menu, I can then go over to the map and hit enter. And now I have the map full screen. And now I'm in the map navigation. You can see I can navigate there, but now I cannot get back to this menu. So there's no option I found if I hold it or whatever, it doesn't work. If I go backwards, so I do the back menu, I get back to this menu, which is the main device interface. So then again, I can scroll through this one and pick Android Auto, and I'm still stuck. I can't get over to that side menu at all. I found no option to get there whatsoever. Now, if you exit out of Android Auto, you can see it's still connected to our AI box. So if you have music playing and you go back to the Harley menu, it'll still play that music. The music doesn't stop, which is a nice feature. To get back in, you launch CarPlay, and then you're back in wherever you were left off. But fortunately, it does support touchscreen, and you may have to touch the screen occasionally to get to where you want to go. One other question I had was about music. Does the right hand control work for music? So if I tap the center button on the right, the music starts playing. But if I tap it to turn the music off, it doesn't. So in order to stop it from playing, you have to navigate over to it. But since we can't, because we're in this, I'll have to click on YouTube Music, which will put me in that app. And then I can hit the pause button using the left hand control. So you can advance songs or go backwards, but you can't stop the music without using the left hand control. Of course, the volume up and down works no matter what. One last piece of information. This is the interface of the box, and there's a settings menu. Now, if you have your phone connected and you have Android Auto running, there's also a settings menu, and that's purely for Android Auto. But this settings menu is for the box. So if you tap on that, there are several settings in here that you can play with. So the APK path customization settings is very useful on the bigger box, on the little box, it's pretty limited, but these are Android backend settings you can play with. There's some personal settings, uh, the version information, and then there's some Android settings down here that can be useful. 
but there's also this system settings. And if you tap on that, it's going to want a pin. And the pin for these boxes is 0, 7, 8, 9. And this will unlock some choices built into the box. One of those is the sound mode setting, and there are four of them. So if you're having issues with your sound disconnecting or the sound quality, they recommend that you change to one of the other settings. Now as to what each setting does is not really that clear, but you can certainly cycle through them and see if it improves your situation. I've had no problems with audio on setting number one. The quality setting is set to four. You can play with that if you like. The last one is to restore factory defaults. So if you do this, it'll reset the box before you bought it. So if you're going to return this box or sell it, this is a good option to get all your information off of it. I also found that if you're just having Bluetooth connection issues, you can't get it to work, you might try resetting it. However, if you reset the box, it's going to take several reboots to get it to the point it'll connect to the bike. So just be aware of that. You'll be powering the bike off and powering it back on, letting the box reboot before it'll connect. So the Cameco boxes, reborn and available once again by Onunse, if I'm saying that right. I really want to thank this company for connecting and reaching out to me and making these boxes available. We now have an option for Android Auto for our Harley Davidsons. And the company is committing that they're still making both of these boxes and they will keep them in stock. They're really responsive to their customer service email, which I'll put here and in the description. So if you have problems with the box or you find that it's out of stock, you can reach out to them. They've been great. As always, you're welcome to reach out to me in email. These boxes are not so easy to connect as you have seen. The key is to be patient and you have to power the bike off. The infotainment system is flaky as it is with CarPlay. It's flaky with these boxes. So you have to power it off power it back on, make sure you leave the bike off long enough so the infotainment system actually goes off. But once you've established the connection to the box, it works from that point forward. I've never had that issue after setting up the box. So is it worth it? Well, I think you're for an Android user, the Android Auto interface on your bike is well worth having. You may have to deal with some control issues and maybe occasional connection issues, but overall, you'll at least have the Android Auto experience on your bike. Of course, you can always pair your Android phone directly to the bike and use the bike's built-in interface. But if you want Android Auto, at least for now, one of these boxes is really your only option. And these two are currently in stock. So as always, I will have links to everything in the description of this video and that will include affiliate links to both of these boxes on Amazon. So if you purchase through the affiliate link, I'll get a small commission from Amazon for referring the product to you. And that goes a long way to helping me support this channel. So I truly appreciate it if you'd use my link. So I sure hope you found this information useful. And if you did, you'll go share it with someone else. But until next time, in the Friction Zone,